Okay, good day. This is Dual Enrollment Pre-Calculus. I am Mr. McCulley, and this is lesson number 10, Graphing Rational Functions. Let's get right to it. Okay, so today we're going to analyze and sketch the graphs of rational functions. We are going to decide if a graph, if a graph of a rational function has a slant asymptote and find that slant asymptote. And then we're going to use rational functions to model and solve problems. All right, so steps for graphing rational functions and you're going to see that i'm going to use these steps as i go through and do the next three or four examples here and so first thing we want to do is we're going to find our x and y intercepts and we're going to find the vertical asymptotes those things we've already done so this isn't a whole lot of new information and um, doing those two steps first are very important because those are the places where our graph can only cross the x-axis we're going to find our horizontal asymptotes to determine what the extreme behavior of the function is. Slant asymptote, if possible, please note right here that um, if you have a horizontal asymptote, you won't have a slant asymptote, so you don't have to worry about that. And if you have a slant asymptote, you won't have a horizontal asymptote. Then we're going to graph a point over the interval. That's kind of a misnomer. We're just going to basically plug in a point and decide whether it's above or below the x-axis and then we're going to complete the graph with a smooth curve. Now, a slant asymptote, we're going to define that right here before we get into some graphing. If the degree of the numerator is exactly one more than the degree of the denominator, then you have a slant asymptote. And the equation of that slant asymptote, it is a line, so it has an equation, is going to be uh, the quotient of the numerator and the denominator without the remainder. So you're just going to throw that away. And that makes sense because uh, if the degree of the numerator is going to be just one greater than the degree of the denominator, when you do the division, the resultant quotient will just be a linear equation. And I will show you that in one of the later examples. Let's get to an easy example right here. Let's talk about this one right here. f of x equals 1 over x to the sixth. Or sorry, I made a mistake there. f of x equals 1 over x minus 6. And so this thing is a very simple rational function. Uh, the degree of the numerator is 0, and the degree of the denominator is just 1. And so let's talk about our intercepts first. So I'm going to start putting this thing together. We're just going to graph this thing by hand, sketch, and again, very simple simple we may have even done something like this when we were doing parent graphs it's that simple um, and we could do a, 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 a transformation from just 1 over x to this one but let's talk about our intercepts let's talk about our x intercepts first and so an x intercept is any value for x that makes the function equal to 0 well if we think about this one this is a fraction and since it's a fraction, the only way a fraction can be 0 is if the numerator is equal to 0. But since I have a constant there, it's never actually going to be equal to 0. It can't be. So right off the bat, we have no x-intercepts. Let's talk about the y-intercepts. Well, the y-intercepts is a value of y when x is equal to 0. So when x is equal to 0 right here, we can figure out what that value is. Now, I'm going to erase that because... I think my zero is going to be in a weird place so let's put it like that and so when I plug in zero I get one over zero minus six is one over negative six which would be negative one sixth so right here we're just going to put it there as negative one sixth and so we've done the intercepts let's talk about our vertical and horizontal asymptotes let's talk about the vertical one first and so the vertical asymptote occurs wherever you have a non-reducible division by zero. And the only place where we have a non-reducible division by zero is when x is equal to six. Uh, so six minus six is zero. It doesn't cancel out with a factor in the numerator. So our vertical asymptote is just going to be x equal to six. So I come over here, I plug in six, and I draw in my vertical asymptote. All right. Now I'm going to do my horizontal asymptote. And so my horizontal asymptote, I have to compare the degrees of the numerator and the, the, the denominator. So I have um, a degree of 0 in the numerator and a degree of 1 in the denominator. And from the last lesson, we learned that when the degree of the numerator was smaller than the degree of the denominator, our, vert our horizontal asymptote was just going to be y equal to 0. 
All right. Now, because we have nothing that can cancel out, we will have no holes here. And so we have basically only one place where it can cross the x-axis. We have no uh, x-intercepts at all, and we have this one vertical asymptote. So um, since the horizontal asymptote is zero, we have two basic choices. The, our function can go along this x-axis and then go up, or it can go along the x-axis along the bottom and then go down. Now, because at x equals 0, we have negative 1 sixth, we know that it has to hug the x-axis and then go down because we know that there are no other places where it crosses the x-axis. So since 0 gives me a negative value, all of the values in this interval from negative infinity to 6 will have a negative value. Now, from 6 to positive infinity, we have, again, two choices. We have the choice where it can come from positive infinity along the, uh, the asymptote and then come down and hug the x-axis. I didn't mean to touch that there. Or it can start at the bottom and come up. The way that we're going to do that is we're going to, quote, unquote, test a value on that interval. So I'm just going to say plug in 10. All right, so 10 is greater than 6. It's in the interval. Um, 1 over 10 minus 6 will be 1 over 4. And, I mean, you could plot it if you wanted to. If I put a 10 here and I put 1 over 4 right there, we could see that it is a positive value. So we know for sure that every value has to be positive on that interval. And then we would have that. Now, if you want, we can check it. Come to our graphic calculator, hit 1 on top, hit X minus 6 in the denominator, I hit graph, and look at that. We have our graph, and this second y is um, something we'll use later. But uh, we can see that it looks fairly similar to what I had there. All right, moving on to our next example. Um, do this graph, and this graph is a little bit more complex, and it shows some of the other things that we have to talk about. And so first I'm going to say that you should probably factor this function the numerator eum slash denominator and so we'll get um, this thing doesn't factor so 2x stays the same so I look at the denominator and so um, I need two factors of negative 2 that add up to uh, just one and that's fairly easy so if I go x plus 2 and then x minus 1 I have that factored. And so again, we're just going to go through all the steps. So we're going to talk about our x-intercepts. And so x-intercept is a value for x that we don't know that makes the function equal to 0. Well, this is a rational function. So once again, we have to figure out where the numerator is equal to 0. Now, there is a little caveat. Um, if it makes the numerator 0 and the denominator 0 it's still undefined so 0 divided by 0 is undefined but 0 over some number is 0 so if I plug in 0 into the numerator I get 0 in the numerator um, but I get 2 and negative 1 in the denominator so when I multiply them together I get negative 2 so 0 0 is an x-intercept and it's the only value for x that's going to make the function equal to 0 and since 0 0 is an x-intercept it's also a y-intercept and so now we want to talk about our vertical asymptotes. Now, because neither of the two factors, x plus 2 or x minus 1, cancel with a factor in the numerator, they are both going to be non-reducible divisions by 0. So when x equals negative 2, I get a non-reducible, I get a division by 0. And when x equals 1, I get a division by 0. So my vertical asymptotes are going to be x equal to negative 2 and x equal to positive 1. So let's draw those in. Let's go negative 2 right here. Let's go positive 1 right there. And again, we're just going to draw those in. And we have 0 right there. That is a value. Our 0, 0 is our only x-intercept, and I suppose I should label my axis while we're at it. And then finally, let's talk about a horizontal asymptote.
And the horizontal asymptote is going to be comparing the degrees of the numerator and the denominator. In this case, the degree of 2x is just 1, and the degree of x squared plus x minus 2 is 2. So the degree of the denominator is bigger. That means my horizontal asymptote, again, is going to be y equal to 0. All right, so I've got all the places where it crosses the x-axis, and I have the extreme, uh, the extreme values of the function. And so I have basically two choices. If I start over here at negative infinity, it can hug the x-axis and then go up, or it can hug the x-axis and go down. Those are my only two choices because we have all of the places where it could cross the x-axis. So I pick, a, a, pick some number. Let's say I pick negative 10. I go back up to this function, negative 10 times 2 is negative 20. So I've got a negative on the top. If I square negative 10, I get negative 100. And then minus 10 minus 2 would be uh, 100 minus 12, which would be positive 9 or 88. So I've got negative over a positive. That's a negative. So since I found a negative when I plugged the value in, Every value from negative infinity to negative 2 has to be negative in the y-axis. That tells me that it's going to hug the x-axis and then go down to negative infinity. All right, so I have a second interval here from negative 2 to 0 where it could cross the x-axis. There are only two choices. It can start at positive infinity and come down to 0, or it can start at negative infinity and come up to 0. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to plug in a point. I'm going to plug in, say, 1 right there. Now when I plug 1 into the numerator, 1 into the numerator, I get a positive on top. When I plug 1 into this, um, I get, or excuse me, not 1. It should be negative 1. I apologize. Let's, let's do it again. So when I plug negative 1 into 2, I get negative 1 times 2 is negative 2. And then negative 1 squared would be positive 1. Minus 1 is 0. Minus 2 is negative. So I have a negative on top, a negative on the bottom. That's going to be positive. So since negative 1, we get a positive value every value on this interval will be positive and we go there. Now we have two choices from 0 to positive 1. It's either going to go up to back up to positive infinity or it's going to come through and go down to negative infinity. So I'm going to do essentially the same thing except I'm going to pick negative a half. Now negative 1 half, let's use the bottom function to do this one. Negative, and since they're the same, it shouldn't change anything. So I go, I get negative a half here. Negative a half times two is a negative one. So I get negative on the top. Negative one half makes this positive. Start over. I apologize. I have positive one half. That's what we're going to check. I keep screwing this up. Positive one half. Positive one half times two is positive one. So I have a positive on top. Positive one half plus two is positive two and a half. I have a positive there. Positive one half minus one is negative one half. So I have a negative times a positive is negative. Positive divided by a negative is negative. So this function has to be negative over the interval, and so it goes down. Now, if I pick 10 for this last interval, 10 makes all of these factors positive. So I get positive divided by positive. So every value from 1 to positive infinity has to be positive, meaning it has to come down and go like this. And again, you after you've done all that work, and you do need to do that work, you can come over to your graphing calculator. You can go up here. You can go 2x and type over that. You can go um, x squared and then minus or no it was plus sorry plus x minus 2 and hit graph and clearly we see that um, we did it correctly now the one thing I do want to point out is and you'll notice that we had a horizontal asymptote at x equal to 0 or y equal to 0 excuse me and it does cross the x-axis so we do at, ex at uh, values close to the origin, we could have a possibility where it does cross our horizontal asymptote. The horizontal asymptote only talks about extreme values, both positive and negative.
Okay, that one's done. Let's talk about this one. Now I'm not going to do the whole one, the, the whole function, because uh, the actual graphing of this one is easier than what um, we've done in the, in, in the last two. But I do want to show I have a function that has two fractions in it. What should I do if I have a function that has two fractions in it? Well, what I should do is subtract to form one fraction. And that will give us a rational function. Okay, so while I've got this, I'm going to subtract these two fractions, and even though they both have equations in the denominator, um, we're going to subtract them the same, same way as we did any fraction. So let's come down here and let's, let's look at this. Um, let's get rid of this here for a second and get rid of this, and I'll put it in a second. All right, if I were asking you to add two fractions, say one-third and one-fifth, the way that we would do that is we would find a common denominator. Now, most of you guys in your head can say, all right, I have a co least common multiple between 3 and 5 is 15. So 3 times 5 is 15, so 1 times 5 is 5. Um, 5 times 3 is 15, so 1 times 3 is 3. And then I add 5 and 3 to get to 8. Um, so we usually skip some steps. But what we are really doing here to get this 5 over 15 is we are multiplying by a funky 1. And that funky 1 is 5 over 5 because 5 over 5 is 1. But 5 times 1 gives me 15. 5 times 3 gives me the, or excuse me, 5 times 1 gives me 5. And then 5 times 3 gives me the 15. I do the same thing over here. I go 3 over 15. Or no, excuse me. Let's do it right. 3 over 3, it's 1 again. 5 times 3 gives me the 15, 1 times 3 gives me um, 3, and so we add those. Now when we go back to this particular fraction, and I'm going to say f of x equals, I'm going to leave that 5 out front there, and I'm going to write what we had, uh, x 1 over x minus 4 minus 1 over x plus 2, and I'll leave some extra space. And that extra space is for those funky 1 fractions. So just like... In this last one, I picked the funky one of this fraction to be the denominator of the second fraction. I'm going to pick my funky one to be x plus 2 over x plus 2. Over here, I'm going to do something similar, except I'm going to use the x minus 4. So x minus 4 over x minus 4. Now, I'm still going to leave the 5 out front. I multiply x plus 2 times 1. I get x plus 2. We are still subtracting. 1 times x minus 4 is x minus 4. I put the fraction or, or I put the parentheses around it so I remember to do the whole subtraction. Now, I would suggest that you not multiply these out. And the reason in this particular instance that we're not going to multiply out the x plus 2 and the x minus 4 is because in that next graphing stage, we're going to want these two factors so that we can find our vertical asymptotes if we need to. All right, so let's subtract here. I've got, uh, let's do one more step. I have my 5 out front, x plus 2 minus x. I'm distributing the negative, so it's going to give me a positive 4 there. And so I still have my x plus 2 and then x minus 4. And then so when I collect my like terms here, um, I end up x minus x is 0 x's. 2 and 4 is going to be 6, and then 6 times 5 is tw is 30, so I end up with 30 over x plus 2 times x minus 4. This is my rational function, and they are both equal. That's an x. Let's do a better job. This is my final answer. It should be x plus 2 and then x minus 4. And so clearly we can see that um, this thing has a horizontal or vertical asymptote at x uh, minus 2 and x plus 4, and then it has a hor horizontal asymptote at uh, 0. And you, could, you guys can do that. Uh, okay, so the last uh, example before the uh, extended response is how do I find a slant asymptote? 
And so in this particular instance, uh, I have, I'm going to have a slant asymptote, and I notice that I have a slant asymptote because the degree of the numerator um, is 3 and the degree of the denominator is 1. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to divide and find the quotient. All right, so if I divide and find the quotient, I'm going to go x squared plus 4 divided by or divided into x to the third. Now we've done long division, so we remember that I have to have placeholders for the remaining fact or the remaining terms. All right. So doing the long division. What times x squared is x to the third? Well, just x. So x times x squared is x to the third, x times 4 is 4x, that would be an addition, and we are subtracting the whole thing away, so x to the third minus x to the third is 0, uh, 0x minus 4 is negative 4x, we know that this is the remainder, and so we're going to take our, we're just going to get rid of that, that's all we care about, and so in this case our slant asymptote is y equal to just this value right here. It's just x. And so if I come down to my graph, I go x and y again. y equals x is a, an asymptote that has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. And so that's my slant asymptote. And so let's go back and try and find some of the rest of the stuff. Let's talk about our intercepts, x-intercept. What value for x makes the function equal to 0? Okay, well, um, 0 makes it 0, and so that becomes the y-intercept. Is there any other value for x, or, or when I plug in 0, I get zero, 0 out. That's all I have. Let's talk about my horizontal asymptotes. Well, this thing doesn't factor, and I'm just going to show you real quick. If I go x squared plus 4x, or 4, x squared plus 4, and I set that equal to 0, I get x squared equals negative 4, so x equals plus or minus the square root of negative 4. That's imaginary. So there are no horizontal asymptotes. Oops, I misspoke. should be vertical asymptotes. There are clearly no horizontal asymptotes. And there are no horizontal asymptotes because we have the slant asymptote. All right. So what does the graph of this thing look like? Well, there's only one x-intercept here. And so, and there's no vertical asymptotes. So it can only really do two things. It can either come up here and, and hit the x-intercept or it can be below the slant asymptote and then come up and hit the x. So let's let's just plug in 1 see what happens, right? So if I plug in 1 and uh, let's plug in negative 1 and there would be negative 1 and so that point right there would be negative 1, negative 1. When I plug in negative 1 into the original function, negative 1 um, to the third is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1 plus 4 is 5. All right, so I get negative 1 over 5 Negative 1 over 5 is negative 1 fifth. So it's kind of above our asymptote. So what it's going to look like from here to where it crosses the x-axis, it's going to look something like that. And then if I plug in positive 1, and I get positive 1, that would be that point here, I'm going to get something similar. I'm going to get something similar. So 1 to the third is 1. 1 squared is 1 plus 4 is 5. So I got 1 over 5. And so we get one-fifth again, so we're going to get a graph that kind of goes like that and then hugs our slant asymptote as it goes to infinity. And you can check that, press pause, check that in your uh, graphing calculator if you wanted to. Our last example here is we have a triangle at the right, right here. It's formed in the first quadrant by the x-axis, x and y-axis. So this x-axis is a side, the y-axis is a is a side in this line segment that goes through 3, 2, 
is the third side. So it's a hypotenuse because we know that the x and y axis are perpendicular to each other. So it says show that the equation of the line segment is y equals 2 times a minus x over a minus 3. Then it asks us to show that the area of a triangle is a squared over a to the third. And C, it says use uh, the graphing calculator to estimate what value of A minimizes the area. So we want to have the smallest possible area. Now, we don't need to do A or B to do C because they give you this equation. So you could just plug this equation in and graph it and find that, um, uh, that estimate. But let's do the rest of it first. And so um, for part A, you will note that we have two points. We have 3, 2, and a zero so two points on the curve that's enough to find the equation of a line and so first i'm going to find the slope and so i get m equals let's see here let's subtract the y's two minus zero let's subtract the x's three minus a giving me two over uh three minus a that's looking good so far okay so point slope form form of a line y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1 um, so I'm going to use this this point here as my y or x1 y1 all right oops let's do a better job here I use it as my x1 y1 okay and so i get uh, y minus zero because there's that and then my slope i just found so two over three minus a and then my x1 is a again so i get x minus a and so y minus zero is just y when you multiply a fraction times a, a, a number you just multiply across the numerator. So I got two times X minus A over three minus A. Okay, so first question, oops, this looks backwards. I got the, had the A's first. Well, that's not a big deal. What we're just gonna do is we're gonna multiply by negative one over negative one. That's one, so I'm not changing the function. And so I changed the sign. So I've got two times negative X plus A over uh, negative three plus a and then addition is commutative so two plus three is equal to three plus two so I can just switch and I get two uh, a minus x over a minus three so boom we've done that uh, part b we want to show that the area is the same so my area equation is a equals one over uh, base times the height Okay, so let's take a look at this thing. So in this particular instance, in this particular instance, um, my base is whatever that A units long is. So I'm gonna come down here, half times A. All right, the height, the height is equal to Y here. And so my height equaling to Y, and I have an equation for Y. It's this equation right here. All right, so I'm just gonna plug that in that I had before. It was two times a minus x over a minus three. Okay, now in this particular instance, all right, in this particular instance, when we're using y as our height, the x value is equal to zero. So when h is equal to y, x has to equal 0. So a equals 1 half times a. And then I'll have 2 times a minus x. Or two, uh, I just told you it was 0. So 2 times a minus 0 all over a minus 3. And then I get a equaling 2. Well, let's do some canceling here. Let's get a better tool all right so the half and this two cancel out a minus zero is just a 
a times a is a squared, and then a minus 3 is still a minus 3 on the bottom. We have correctly done that. Now, the last thing it asks us to do is find the value of a that minimizes the area. Let's go right to the graphing calculator, hit our y equals. Let's go over to here. Let's clear this out, and let's make it x squared. And then let's go down to the bottom. Let's clear this out and make it uh, 3 minus x, I think is what we need there. No, we need it to be x minus 3. Let's do it correctly. X minus 3. And because of the graphing calculator, we're trading it for A. So if I hit graph, I go, uh-oh, I don't see anything here. Um, so let's open the window up uh, just a little bit. Let's open the Ys, make the Ys a little taller. So let's go to um, Y. Uh, let's go to 30, see if that's enough. Change our scale to 3. Hit our graph. Let's see what we got. Oh, look at that. There's what we got. All right. So negative area doesn't make any sense. And so we're looking for positive area. So I'm looking for to minimize the area right here. And so I'm going to go second. I'm going to use my uh, minimum functions. I'm going to hit 3. And we're going to go, oh, come on. There we go. I'm going to go hit there a little bit to the right of where I think it would hit. It's hit right there. Hit enter. We get a guess. So at 612, we get a minimum area. Let's answer the question. Use the uh, estimate, the area, a value of A that minimizes the area. So when, so part C, when A equals to 6, the area is minimized. All right, that's all I got. A couple of mistakes. Uh, if you need clarification, we can work on them in class. Um, but let's get to the Star Wars fun fact of the day. Star Wars A New Hope was made on what seems like pennies for to, uh, to compared to blockbuster movies of today. So much so that Harrison Ford, Han Solo himself, was paid only $10,000 for his performance in episode four. That's all I got. Have a good day.